TCI is brought to you by Northern Fleet, standing at TaylorMade Stallions. What has he done for you lately? Visit northernafleet.com to find out. Welcome back to TCI, your inside track to the Triple Crown. I'm John Siegel alongside Joel Cunningham. Joel, we're here, season three of TCI. Welcome back to the show. Man, it's good to be back. It's my favorite time of the year, certainly, leading up to the Triple Crown Trail. It's been since 78 since we've had that Triple Crown winner. Right. The year I was born. Let's see if we can get it done this year. You know, this year's a little bit different for me. Last year, we had a lot of big name horses, big time pedigrees, big time connections. Right. You had like Uncle Mo, Tapazar, Dialed In, just to name a few. This year feels a little different. Does it, is it the same for you? Well, it, it feels that way so far in terms of the big stakes that have run. You know, each of the big circuits, John, to this point, have had a race so far. You know, you look at New York with the Count Fleek Stakes, Alpha winning there. Now, they're going to run the Wither Stakes soon. You have Fairgrounds, Mr. Bowling winning there as one of the favorites for Larry Jones. Uh, but none of these horses, John, I think the common denominator is we're, we're not seeing the big-time connections, the big-time pedigrees break through in these races yet. I think we saw it a little bit this past weekend, but right. even some concerns with some recent winners like Algorithms winning the Holy Bull, and we'll get into that more. Well, let's jump right in there and talk about it. I mean, the Holy Bull obviously was this last weekend. Right. Joel, the track was wet. The Sunshine Millions the day before was, was really a weird day. You right. had all front runners winning. Let's talk about the Holy Bull for a minute. You mentioned uh, Algorithms, but Hanson, a horse that obviously needs to be on the front end, stumbles out of the gate, do you think that cost him the race? You know, I don't know if it cost him the race, but I certainly see why he carved out the speed he did, John. I mean, here's a brilliant horse, Hanson, undefeated champion coming in, odds on favorite. Now here he's been training fantastic in Florida, but the bottom line is, John, when you're a fresh horse and you stumble out of the gate, a lot of times, if you're as brilliant as Hanson is, you're gonna show a little bit more speed than perhaps uh, was set, you were set out to intend to show. I don't think Ramon wanted him to go nearly that fast, but a lot of times horses get scared when they stumble out of the gate and they're that fresh. So I think he definitely shot to lead, set maybe a little more ambitious for actions than he would have liked. But quite honestly, over a sloppy sealed track at, right. at Gulfstream around a one-turn mile, to have an easy lead like that, you know, I certainly didn't see it as a monster disadvantage for Hanson, and yet he got run down by a pretty good horse. Well, there is another horse in there I'd like to talk about. Obviously, you said Algorithms won the race. Right. But a horse that came close and late caught my eye was Maya Adonis. This, this is a horse Kelly Breen told us to keep an eye on. What do you think of him? Yeah, Kelly Breen obviously had a huge year last year with three-year-old John. Everybody knows the Belmont winner, ruler on ice and pants on fire. He's really arrived on the seed, Kelly Breen, with these three-year-olds, and he's doing the same with Maya Adonis. As you mentioned, he loved him last year, too. They ran terrible in the Delta jackpot, but he's obviously been showing very forward movement at Palm Meadows, has a couple bullet works there coming in. They felt confident enough to run him against the two-year-old champ in a very good race in the Holy Bull. And I like the fact that he was able to settle off the pace and run down the stretch. He's a son of pleasantly perfect, bred for two turns. Elusive quality makes you wonder how far he'll go. Right. But certainly with this sire, you would think he'll handle two turns, Sean. So here's a horse that certainly was a good sneaky third in the race. All right, like you said, we've had four major circuits that have had early derby prep so far. Right. Have any of those horses caught your eye where you would put them in maybe your top five? Yeah, if I were to give a top five right now, I would say one of the early winners so far. I mean, we've mentioned a lot of them. The one we haven't mentioned yet is Out of Bounds, the sham winner. I mean, here's a horse that is out of unbridled Elaine, certainly a Breeders' Cup distaff winner, and is a three-quarter brother to a horse by the name of Etched, who you know, was by forestry but showed he wanted to handle the long distances. He right. was a true nine furlong type of horse, John. You know, I look at uh, I look at out of bounds. You know, he is by discreet cat, more of a sprinter, miler, and he's only won at a mile, but it was a two turn mile, and I love the way he finished that day. Ran down a pretty good horse, Secret Circle, who I think was a sprinter, but still got a pretty fast speed figure in doing so. So right now, Out of Bounds probably heads an intriguing group of California two-year-olds, along with maybe Creative Cause. All right, let's just stay with this theme for a second. Let's go ahead and round out this top five. Yeah. Tell me, who else do you like in that list? Well, I mentioned Creative Cause. He's probably going to get going this weekend, John, in the Bob Lewis stakes. Be interesting to see how he runs. He's been such an honest colt. If you look at his pedigree, now, as good as he was at two, he's supposed to be a better three-year-old. So, be interested to see Creative Cause get going this weekend. He's been working sharply in California. And, you know, to, to really talk about some other ones, I think you got to point out that Bob Baffert and Todd Pletcher seem to be the most loaded again. Right. You know, the one stereotypical thing about this three-year-old group so far, John, is that even though it's, 
You know, we, we really don't know where the power is right now, especially the classic power. We do know that Todd Pletcher and Bob Baffert are both loaded with talent. They've had a lot of impressive maiden winners, a lot of impressive allowance winners. And so you're seeing the strength in California and the strength in Florida per usual. All right, now so far this year, Breeders' Cup winners have not fared too well going into the 2012 season. Right. We see a horse that lost the Breeders' Cup Juvenile by a nose last year in Union Rags. Does right. he make it into your top five right now? I would say he'd be the horse on top right now for me, John. You know, I mentioned Creative Cause, mentioned Out of Bounds. I think rounding out that top three or so would be Union Rags. I think I'd put him at the top because for me, he's shown the best combination of a horse that has a good classic profile in terms of his uh, looks, ability, the fact that his trainer typically goes slow on horses. However, this horse was a very dynamic two-year-old. I just think you can expect more now from his three-year-old season. I thought he was the best horse in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, John. You know, to me it looked like in the stretch he drifted out towards the crowd, showed a little greenness, but once the jockey got to him with the right-hand stick, he really engaged Hanson again. That last 60, 16th right. of a mile galloped out past him. He's got a big rag and fig out of that race. So I think Union Rags is the goods. The one question for him, he has a ton of stamina on his bottom side. Will that Dixie Union on the top side, more of a sprint brilliant type pedigree, right. will he be able to carry that a mile and a quarter? It's a question mark. All right, you're giving me three. Give me two more horses for that top five. Yeah, I think the other two, I mentioned Bob Baffert. You know, he has a ton of them, John. You look at, you know, Fed Biz, Liaison. I mean, Bob's got a ton of talented horses, as mentioned. The one that I think might be bred best for the classic distance is Sky Kingdom. Now, he hasn't shown the best so far. He ran fourth in the cash call. It's a pretty good fourth, and that was on the synthetic, and he won an allowance race last time out on dirt at, at Santa Anita very easily. Didn't get a good speed figure, but it was basically a public workout, and he's come back and worked well since. I expect Ky Sky Kingdom, looking at his pedigree, to be a horse that will handle the classic distances. If he continues to improve, I think he belongs in the top five. And then El Padrino, John. You know, we talked so much about the Holy Bull over the weekend. Right. El Padrino, to me, was an impressive undercard allowance winner. I thought he ran down a very good horse and take charge Andy. Got a 100 buyer speed figure, a very fast time for two turns a mile and a 16th. So now here's a horse with some stamina that John's Causeway on the bottom side, the brilliance on the top side with pulpit. I just think he took a big step forward from his two year old campaign. Right. And he might be Todd Pletcher's top contender right now, even more so than algorithms who's a horse that won, you know, obviously beat champion Hanson very right. impressively in the Holy Bull, but you look at algorithm, he has more of a miler sprinter type pedigree if you look at his half brothers. So you wonder how far he's gonna go. So I'd, I'd give El Petrino the lean. So you kind of proved my point right there. Those two last horses are allowance winners, so maybe we haven't yeah. seen the best out of this crop yet. You give me five horses that you like so far this year. I know it's early in the season, but give me one that's maybe under the radar so far. Well, if you had asked me a couple weeks ago, I'd have said Consortium, and he runs dead last in the Holy Bull. But I'm looking now at a horse named Brigand. I mean, here's a horse that's totally off the radar at this point. He showed a lot of ability last year as a two-year-old from the Bob Baffert barn. Got hurt, had some setbacks, but he has a good work schedule now coming up. Should be making his three-year-old debut, debut pretty soon. John, here's a horse that has the pedigree to stretch out and the looks if you saw him run last year. He's a horse that, to me, looked too big and too oversized maybe to be a top two-year-old. I think he probably needed the break, but I think he could come back and have a big year. All right, well, thank you, Joel. One thing for sure, it's going to be exciting keeping our eye on these three-year-olds. Make sure you come back on Thursday. We're going to have a prep preview for you. We'll cover the Withers, the Sam F. Davis, take you out to California for the Robert Lewis.